Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Fulner here. How is everybody getting along? Well, we're going to be tracking a storm system that's going to be heading across the east. You can see on Thursday, it's going to start out as a mixture heading over to heavy wet snow Thursday night into Friday across much of the northeast. Take a look at that. So we could be looking at an interior snowstorm, heavy wet snow across much of the northeast. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into my potential here for six inches or greater. It is in this red area in north central northeastern Pennsylvania, upstate New York. Uh, places from State College, Binghamton, up to Utica, Albany, Syracuse, uh, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area. These areas could see the greatest risk. I have you at the scale of four already. Not ready to put you in the five just yet. And these orange areas in northern New England here up towards three. If you're in the green or the yellow area, this is the caution area. This is where you could potentially see advisory criteria snowfall. Let's get into it. All right, so as we take a look at the 500 millibar flow here, let's take a look. So, yeah, we got that exiting system up here in the northeast. Take a look at that. So this is Wednesday. Here is our big cyclone here in the central part of the country. That's heading to the north. This energy is going to head this direction towards the east coast. And watch this as we go in time. Watch how interesting this gets. So you have that first wave. And look at this. We have plenty of energy in the upper levels of the atmosphere here to work with. This is by Friday. So we start to see this first wave weekend and the secondary wave develop here in southeastern Pennsylvania and then pivoting right along the coast and see how you get this surge Saturday. It's going to try to feed more energy into this along the U.S. East Coast. And we're going to stay real. Look at that. This is Tuesday. This is that next system. If this does indeed become something, it would produce heavy snow into parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. We'll have to watch that as well as we go into the week just before Christmas here. But it's looking like a very active pattern continuing along the east coast. And look at that. We amplify Christmas Eve. Wow. If you want a pattern for east coast snowstorms, this is it. Now, here's the euro. Let's take a look at snowfall accumulations here. Yes, they are a bit further to the north, and we'll stop right at the end of the weekend here. This is interesting because the euro is really outputting a lot of snow here from State College. Look at that. Binghamton's the big winner here, tw nearly 20 inches. And look at this. We get some microclimates here showing two inches at Albany, but literally to the west of you, you're, you know, you're getting into the feet of snow here. So, And then more snow up here into northern New England. So the euro is a bit further north here, and look at that Tug Hill Plateau. Uh, capping out towards 30 inches here. And here's the Canadian. Let's take a look and see what the Canadian does. It's a little bit more. Let's just take it through. There we go. Later Sunday there. There it is. All right. So the Canadian's a little more generous, you know, spreading the wealth across. Let's get that out of the way. Get my pen here. Take a look at this. So, yeah, this is a wider area on the Canadian showing a wide 6 to 10, maybe 12 inches. Look at that. The big winner over here in the eastern Catskills, parts of the Hudson, mid-Hudson Valley. That's interesting. Bringing 7 inches all the way down to northern New Jersey, parts of Pennsylvania, the southern Poconos as well. And pretty healthy up here in the Adirondacks as well, uh, 12 plus inches. Binghamton right around 10 inches. Syracuse around 11. Albany right around 10 all right, so let's get into the latest GFS model here. Yeah, it, the GFS is a... There we go, through Sunday. Let's just cut it off there. So yeah, the GFS continues to be a little bit further to the south, bringing the heaviest snow across eastern Pennsylvania, southern Poconos, Catskills into New York, the Hudson Valley. This is where we could see... On the GFS, 12 to 14 inches of snow. So we're going to have to see what's going to win out here. I'm trending a little bit more towards the Euro, but we'll watch it here. As we go in time, we can't discount this as well because this is some heavy totals a little bit farther to the south. But look at that. Even Binghamton, 10 inches. Rochester, 9.3. 7 inches over towards the Capital District. But look at that. Right around Scranton, that's where the 14 to 18 inches is. All right, so let's start off here with the GFS, and then I'm going to propagate over to the Euro and the Canadian, which are really backing up each other pretty well. Well, we have the storm system out here later Monday night into Tuesday. Look how this is going to wind up here across the upper Midwest. So this is the first punch that we're going to be dealing with here. As you can see up here in the upper Midwest, this low is going to be heading up like this. So you get this heavy snow on the backside of this system. Now look at this. It's dragging a cold front here across parts of the Mississippi River Valley, bringing some showers and some embedded thunderstorms as well. But watch how this heads up towards the east here. Let's propagate this eastward. You know, across the south, we're going to get some moisture here. But look at this. Up towards northern Wisconsin, Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota here. We'll be getting some heavy snow, but it's not until, let's back this up just a few frames. This is Thursday at 4 a.m. See how we 
start to get some of this mixed precipitation working into parts of south central part of Pennsylvania and that works into central Pennsylvania just around sunrise and into the morning hours so we'll start to see initially we're going to have a high pressure system which I'll show you momentarily on the surface maps but this is going to provide initially some very dry air on the northeast side of this so it'll have a hard time reaching the ground but look at this we'll start to get some bursts of heavier snow as we head throughout the day on Thursday into parts of Williamsport, Binghamton up towards Syracuse and Scranton and look at this yeah, initially, this could be quite some bursts of snow as we head on into the overnight, into the early morning hours of Friday. Now, you start to see where the low is going to set up here. On the GFS, it's kind of tracking across southern and southeastern Pennsylvania here. That keeps the heaviest snow here to the north across State College, Binghamton up towards Albany, Syracuse, Eastern Lake Ontario region. Unfortunately for you people here in western Pennsylvania, you're going to get some warm air that works in with this low pressure system that will be fading away as we start to get this secondary low developing in the lower Susquehanna Valley. So let's continue here as we go into the day on Friday. You start to see some bursts of heavier snow. This is 10 a.m. on Friday. Take a look at that. So most of these areas across upstate uh, New York into northeastern Pennsylvania still seeing bursts of heavier snow and let's zoom out here you can start to see it really starts to blossom in here in parts of New England take a look at that so this is 4 p this is 4 p.m. so we're still moderate to heavy snow in the Binghamton area Albany Syracuse down towards Wilkes-Barre Scranton so this could be a very interesting storm kind of reminds me of the storm track back on the 2020 storm December 16th will it be that heavy I don't think so but it is kind of interesting that it is following a similar pattern here at this time of year. And look at this comma shaped. Let's just zoom out momentarily here. You can see how the system's really just winding up here along the U.S. East Coast. And let's continue. Let's see how long the snow continues in upstate New York here. Look at 7 p.m., 10 p.m. Look at how it starts to pivot here towards downstate New York, the Poconos, Catskills, lower Hudson Valley. This is where you could start to see some accumulations heading on into the weekend here. One to two inches an hour, it looks like according to this model. So as we continue to propagate here, look at that. It works into New England by 4 a.m. Saturday morning. We start to pivot away from I-81 in upstate New York and Pennsylvania. And look at this. It kind of gets a second win here. Saturday at 4 p.m. Look at how it starts to blow up once again. So it starts to funnel moisture back into eastern New England here. And this could get pretty interesting here across parts of the northeast heading on into Saturday and Sunday as it tries to pull away. But look at that. We start to see a lake effect response behind it here. And finally, come the rest of the weekend and next week, look what we have waiting back here. We have another storm that could be trying to wind up the U.S. East Coast. Going to remain pretty active. This particular run keeps it mostly off the coast, but it is interesting. Look how close it takes it to New England. And as we continue to go further out here, we can go pretty far out on this model. Take it with a grain of salt. This is Friday, December 23rd. This is going into Christmas weekend. Yeah, it keeps that nor'easter just off the coast, but you know what? A lot can change between now and then. And look at another nor'easter heading up the coast. So a very active pattern. All right, so here we go with the Euro. Let's take a look and see how this plays out. So this is into the plains. That first system, look at that. It's starting to occlude. And it pushes this energy, the secondary low, into the southeast. So we're going to get some severe thunderstorms, it looks like, across parts of the south here. So definitely want to keep an eye on, you know, Wednesday into Thursday here across parts of the deep south. So please heed those watches and warnings. And look at that. As we go to the northeast here on Thursday, this is just afternoon. Look at this mixed precipitation and snow right on the main output of this system. You can see this secondary low trailing along the Appalachians as it's pivoting this direction. And this is going to be a prime location area here into parts of the northeast. See how you get this secondary low development? Let's just back that up one frame. This is a few hours before sunrise. Take a look at this. So you're going to end into some heavy snow in interior New York and Pennsylvania here. You know, this, uh, the primary low is weekend here into parts of the upper Midwest. But look how we start to continue to get this banding action. It's really starting to show up here on the Euro. I'm going to be mo uh, moving in on this momentarily. Look at this. This is Friday. And as you continue into Saturday, that pushes up into northern New England. So let's actually zoom in here regionally into the northeast here so take a look at this as we go towards thursday here it is this is so right around sunrise here it is mixed precipitation across parts of central pennsylvania 
This is right around 9, 10 a.m. So look at that. Yeah, we moved this in pretty quickly. Accumulating snow. And some of these bands of snow could get pretty intense around State College, Binghamton, up towards Albany, Capital District of New York. And look at that. Let's back that up one frame. Just after midnight, look what's going on here. We got this big old slug of moisture feeding into southeastern Pennsylvania, the prime snowfall area across upstate New York into north central Pennsylvania. And that continues to pivot. Now, the Euro is bringing in some warmer air aloft and mid-level, so it, it looks a little bit complicated here, but where you get that heaviest band, look at that, right around Binghamton there, the Catskills, Poconos, we could be seeing some very heavy snow set up, and look at this, right around just before noon here, it starts to really wind up right over New York City, it's still bringing some warm air here into the Hudson Valley before it changes back to snow. So this is an interesting solution here on the Euro. All right, so let's take a look at the 500 millibar anomaly here on the European model. Take a look at this. This is the pattern that's playing into this. So we get this massive blocking over just eastern Canada and Greenland. Look at this massive system off the U.S. East Coast. There's our next system pivoting around it. This is the kind of blocking pattern we're going to continue to watch as we head towards Friday here. And look at that. It erodes this blocking a little bit to the north so it can allow this system to come into the northeast and cause all of these wintry problems and take a look at that that pivots towards monday the 19th and look at this yeah this pattern is crazy but we do start to see uh some evidence that that blocking up in greenland is going to start to weaken and let's take quickly take a look at the gfs see if it agrees with us there's a little bit more amplified pattern as we get later into next week. So here it is, heading out of Friday into Saturday. There's that big old wave heading across eastern North America, and that's going to bring all of that storminess and that wintry conditions. Now, the GFS is hinting at something similar. Look at this, the blocking kind of falling apart and heading westward towards Alaska. But look at this, we still have a very healthy system potentially for the middle of next week, according to the GFS here. We'll have to see if this holds true and watch the trends on the euro but look at this even though we lose a lot of that blocking up in greenland look what's happening here this is towards christmas this is the 23rd this is definitely something to watch we could have a series of nor'easters blasting up along the u.s east coast as we get massive ridging out west here all right so as we take a look at the canadian here take a look at this as we move look at that yeah Let's back that up just a few frames. So this is getting into just after sunrise here. You get sleet and freezing rain, mixed precipitation moving into parts of Pennsylvania. And it looks like the Canadian initially has a lot of sleet, you know, across northeast Pennsylvania. Stripe a heavier snow across upstate New York here. Uh, this is heading towards, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, so the Canadian's a little bit slower with this and more drawn out with the wintry precipitation to the north. And look at this. This is, uh, so this is Thursday. There we go, Thursday night and a Friday. So here is the low pressure system here uh, winding up, keeping it kind of mixed here in the upper Susquehanna Valley. And then as we continue, look at that, just back that up one frame, switching, getting a lot of warm air here at mid layers. We'll have to watch that as that continues to pull to the northeast, it changes back to snow and we get blustery and cold behind it. All right, so getting out to the tropics, yeah, that thing in the central uh, Atlantic here never materialized last week. But, you know, take a look at this. Things are rather clear. We do have a little feature here down towards the Lesser Antilles going to get some heavy rain, gusty winds. But, you know, this time of year, it's looking nice and quiet from Jamaica over to Hispaniola. This is Thursday, December 15th. Look at that. You really can't complain if you're in the Caribbean. Gulf of Mexico is remaining active with these tail ends of these frontal boundaries that stall. But look at this. This is by Saturday, December 17th. And as we continue to go in time, look at that. You're not going to have a drop of rain in most areas here across the Caribbean as we head through Christmas until the day after Christmas. We start to get this tail end of a frontal boundary moving from Belize over to Cuba and just north of Jamaica. Look at that. So we might have some showers and some thunder showers try to work their way in. But that kind of pivots here towards the north as we get towards the 27th. And things are pretty quiet here initially over towards the Philippines. We do have this a feature down southeast of the Philippines here. We'll continue to watch that. Let's put this into motion and see what we got going on. We do have a system, a little system to talk about here, Tropical Depression, PACAR here with that system that moved just to the east of the Philippines over the weekend. So let's take a look here, see what that's pretty much dissipated. And look at that. The intertropical convergence zone remaining pretty far to the south until we get to the central Philippines here. This is this Thursday, December 15th. We do have some heavier showers and thunder showers moving in on the Philippines here. And that moves through. I'm not expecting that to develop into anything. 
That moves to the west. You see there's the frontal boundary up here just south of Taiwan and Japan. So that's going to scour out any of these systems that are moving up to the north. Now we got a feature that bears watching out here. Here it is. It's just east of the Philippines. We do have another feature over towards Vietnam, but it's really starting to hard to get development up here this time of year. Look at the intertropical convergence zone all the way over to the Indian Ocean. Looking pretty impressive over there. So let's go over here to the Philippines. We'll zoom out a little bit and we'll take a look as we continue to go into next week. Look at this. Yeah, we do have another system that bears watching. Could this become a tropical storm? It's quite possible. It's kind of following a similar track uh, to our previous system here, PACAR. So we'll have to keep an eye on it here. This is Sunday, December 18th. Definitely keep an eye on it, but look at how it gets caught up in the westerlies and it keeps it away from the Philippines. That's great news. You actually see the frontal boundary is actually making it down here into the northern Philippines. So you're going to get a different air mass up here uh, from Manila on northward. Central Philippines, you stay pretty tropical down into the southern Philippines as well. Look at this frontal boundary, though. This is going to make it practically impossible for any tropical development. And look at that. That kind of just washes out. As so we go through Christmas here, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, look at that. So that frontal boundary remains pretty entrenched here across the northern Philippines, which is going to keep things pretty quiet when it comes to the tropics here. That takes us to Wednesday, December 28th. We do have a potential typhoon way, way out here, but it bears... Doesn't look like it's going to affect the Philippines. And here we go from Groton, Connecticut. Jim sending in his photo from the other night, uh, December 11th. That snow system that moved through, bringing that heavy wet snow to the area. Look at that nice capture there. Accumulating on the coldest surfaces. Most of the pavement surfaces across the area were okay, but you can see it's starting to pile up a little bit on some of the colder surfaces. Nice capture there, Jim. So I wanted to show you this briefly. Let's take a look and see any bitter cold temperatures heading our way. Well, as we get into, there it is, just behind that big system on Friday into Saturday, there's a surge across the eastern Great Lakes. But look at that, a little bit of a warming trend. But look what starts to hint here. This is towards Christmas, uh, the 22nd. Look at this big, massive cold blast here across the northern plains. That's heading east towards Christmas and Christmas week. All right, so let's get an idea of what's going on with the temperature profile here uh, throughout the week. So as we go throughout the week, it's going to be pretty cold lows here across the northeast. Let's go towards Thursday here. So we get towards, you know, let's go towards the height of the storm here. When we initially start out, yeah, this is the European model. Not that, you know, these models aren't great for temperatures, but they give us a little bit of an idea. Right around 30 here across northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York. So we're kind of manufacture our own cold air, so to speak, here. Uh, with these uh, heavier bands of snow that move in. Now, as you go throughout the morning hours, look at this. You can clearly see where the low is. It's bringing some warm air up here into eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. It's going to be interesting to see the area of the where the snow banding takes place if we're going to continue to watch these temperatures tumble here around Binghamton to State College up to Albany or wherever this heaviest band sets up. Now, we do start to work in some heavier or warmer temperatures here uh, as we head towards noon on Friday, but look how right behind it, you know, sat Friday night into Saturday, look at this. We start to really pivot those colder temperatures right behind it. Extended outlook from a hometown viewers, Bingham to the Scranton's upper Susquehanna River Valley. Yeah, this is what we're looking at here. We're cold start, sunny, but look at this. Thursday afternoon in the evening, we get heavy snow moving in one to two inches, and overnight into Thursday night, Friday morning, we could have four to as much as eight inches of snow. So we got to watch out for this. We're going to see uh, just how much this storm winds up. I'll have more details as we go throughout the week. But this is what I'm looking at at this point. We're looking at a solid, you know, four to as much as 10 inches out of this. So please stay tuned. This could be our first big snowstorm of the season. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Beauty Marks Weather Northeastern. Don't forget, link is in the description down below for my winter outlook for this winter season. And also... If you want to buy me a coffee, tip jar also down below. You can find it down there. Also, Facebook Media Mark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. And don't forget, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Thanks for joining me.